face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up you guys and welcome yet again to another episode of Who Was Really Better. As of this week we're gonna cover two Pokemons that I really like quite a lot and they are two Pokemon that haven't necessarily been that loved for very very obvious reasons. Both introduced in Generation 5, they will say the aftermath of Stealth Rocks and these are gonna be Simisir versus Heatmore. These two actually are fairly decent I think, they are very cool niches and variety to make them very viable, however being a fire type means that you have to have some caliber to be able to of course endorse yourself and doing really well and let's face it as this till of generation 5 there were very few fire archetypes that really did well and a few that were really really stood out as very very strong pokemon overall we're talking about of course about heatron for example is a statue fire type and other than that we have arcanine infernape and that's where all the really really good pokemon do stop as a soul fire typing or a fire in tree um our Pokemon has been standing out, has been Embor and of course Volcarona, which really, really are pushing the edges in my honest opinion. So these two never really got a chance to shine, and with of course a Soul Fire type, and that they both represent there are a lot of issues involved with them that makes them less than ideal to use in, of course, the ladder and even in Leaf format. But I am here to go over how good these Pokemon really are and just overall what Arcane theme do they represent and what have people been missing out for quite some time. So with that said, we're going to first go over their typing and then we're going to cover Heatmore and then Simmerseer. So with that said, let's of course go over the first Pokemon. Now I said this before and I say it again, Soul Fire type isn't necessarily a bad typing combination. It's more defensively involved than most typing, even beating of course war type. However, the weaknesses is what's holding it back. We're gonna mention of course all the resistances because I mean all. Bug, Fairy, Fire, Grass, Ice and Steel. Very relevant resistances and really does make them shine quite a lot. Unfortunately, we have a weakness to ground, rock and water, all of them being fairly common which is usually why a combination of a fighting resolve, pretty much the worst of it, making of course another fine ground and rock weakness. But overall, I definitely said it's soul fire typing is a good defensive typing, just isn't necessarily due to self rock that good stamina wise, due to of course being weak to residual damage towards hazards. So with the fire typing course covered, let's look at Heatmore's overarching theme in stats. Now, Heatmore has a very interesting stat distribution because it's very clear that it peaks in a lot of things. We have a really high HP set of 85, 97 is attack and special attack at 105, making it a very, very good mixed wall breaker. The reason I say wall breaker, not a sweeper, is because of the rest of it. Sadly, it does have a few free falling stats and defenses being of both 66. That's unfortunately really low, and of course the speed tier isn't helping either, 65 base speed. Being of a bulkier nature with HP in mind, it, it becomes semi-bulky to some extent, but it also is going to be forced to take hits due to that low speed tier, which does hold heat more back because it has a stat distribution to really make it effective, but not speedy enough to use it all that well. Though with that said, Heatmore is clearly an interesting concept Pokemon and also due to the overarching theme, it is a very good offensive Pokemon as a whole. When it comes to Heatmore's ability however, it has a few interesting ones and definitely can see every three of these actually work into its advantage depending on what you want to use. We have Flashfire, Glottony and White Smoke. We're going to cover White Smoke first because I think that's the one most people tend to not use. White Smoke makes sure that you can't, by any means of your opposing Pokemon, be able to drop in stats. However, moves like Superpower and st that lowers your attack and defense will lower your stats, but Intimidate, Potting Shot will not affect you. And of course, we have the Adrenaline, almost really cool. If you have Intimidate against you, you actually just get the Speed Race. It's a risky strat, but it's viable and actually fairly alright. It works really cool, at least. And we have Gluttony, who's clearly got a buff in this generation with the likes of Figaberry and your berries that did boost your HP furthermore and you know always your salad berry leachy berry will be able to actually get some type of boost very early on doesn't force it to be 25% making heat more really interesting with that in mind and of course flash fire um, it already resists fire but being able to get fire and boost that yeah we've seen likes of rapid dash type lotion have a similar kind of aspect to it and this kind of just furthermore that kind of thing theming and idea and Heatmore, while not, like I said, the speediest Pokemon here, it is able to capitalize on it and make it interesting due to this very reason alone. 
But we also have a bigger aspect, and this is why Heathmore is so interesting, because as last week you guys know, Simi Sage versus Leafeon. Leafeon didn't necessarily have a broad coverage. Heathmore do have a broad coverage. It's actually fairly interesting due to this very reason. And we're going to cover the more relevant moves and just talk about why they are good. First and foremost, we have set up moves in Honeclaw. We have the likes of Fire Spin, which is always going to be great. Bug Bite, we have its exclusive move in Fire Lash, which, much like Liquidation, has a chance of actually reducing defense, but Fire Lash do always drop the opposing Pokemon's defense. Reason that's relevant is because this is an exclusive move to hit more. Who knew you have to wait two generations to get exclusive more for a Pokemon that necessarily aren't that viable in higher meta. Fire Lash, an excellent move overall, definitely better than Fire Punch. And of course, if you want to capitalize on something else, you do have access to Flare Blitz also, and actually Inferno. And we see Hone Claw combination with Inferno, so it's one of those really, really strange combinations that could work to its advantage, actually, and actually makes that Pokemon really interesting. We also have Stockpile, which of course boosts your both defenses. It's always going to be great to capitalize on. Solar Beam, we have Fire Blast, Rock Tomb, Air Lace, Overheat. Focus Blast, C Focus Blast is always something you're going to see with this Pokemon due to be able to, of course, break rock types. Since it doesn't get a proper ground move, this is one of those really great things. Shadow Claw is also there, but one that is interesting is that this Pokemon can pursue Trap and Sucker Punch, both being, of course, extremely viable and with Fire Lash and being able to actually nerf your Pokemon's defense and then force them out and being able to pursue trap them in that, yeah, that is great as Sucker Punching, making Heat more as a whole very, very cool to use. When it comes to Cheer Move, it has a broad array of moves, and as I mentioned before, Solar Beam is an access, but the reason you don't want to use C Solar Beam is because you do get Giga Drain, which is why you want to have the C Focus Blast instead. We also have a broad array of Thunder Punch, Low Kick, Knock Off, Gastro Acid, which is always great, Recycle, which really gluttony makes this Pokemon potentially bulkier. And it also got a filler ground move, which I don't recommend using, but it did get a least, and that is stomping tantrum move. We also have Snatch, and of course, C Snatch boosts your speed by two, which could nullify and actually solve its speed issue as a whole. Other than that, when it comes to previous generation, it did get power up punch and dig, and dig is very relevant now, of course, with uh, Ratchet's axis of the move that it got with stomping tantrum. Uh, other few decent film which would be Superpower and Heat Wave when I capitalize on it. But overall, Heatmore's overarching theme is really good. It do have a coverage to deal with most of its pre-existing issues. And uh, I believe, to be honest, that the um, upgrade it got in this generation haven't made it justice yet. Because from previous generation, it wasn't that great. People have avoided using it due to it not getting proper upgrades, but I definitely say this now, due to the evolution of Generation 7, Heatmore got a lot more viability in bond with it, it's just up to every other person to actually find out how to get lights on it. Heatmore is an extremely viable Pokemon, it's great at wall break, and with the and theme of sea moves and of course gluttony, this Pokemon got in a different kind of meta, it's just about to people for use it eventually. But with that said, we have one more Pokemon to cover, and that's going to be Simnesir. Now, much like Simisage from last week, Simisir and of course Simipore will represent the same type stat distribution. We have 75 and 8 HP, 98 in both offensive stats, 63 in both defensive stats, and of course 101 in the speed tier. That said, Simisir is a soul fire type in making it already automatically better than Simisage, which fire type overall is of course a better offensive typing, which means that it's a much more interesting wall breaker. It is whether or not it has the relevance to actually make it up for against heat more, and that's what we're gonna try to cover whether or not it does. But overall, the really good offensive wall breaker, possibly sweeper actually if we're going for the lowest tier, but I think we're gonna be fair and say wall breaker for the higher tiers. When it comes to his abilities, this is the reason Heatmore was the first one to be introduced here. We still talked about Golodony and the reason it's so relevant, and it's still just as relevant here. Maybe not with the recovery berries in mind. Of course, Simmer here is definitely a less bulkier than Heatmore, but not by a lot. But quite frankly, you have more, of course, a pinch stat boost berries like you know, Salakberry and Lychee and any other berry that I actually represent with that. But we also have Blaze, Focus Sash. Um, variant of the Simmers here with the blaze activated with overheat or even on the, the fire burst or even C moves in mind if you want to capitalize on that and try to recover without the sash makes Simmers here very hard to deal with. It just has that massive damage output naturally 
And yeah, so overall, a really, really scary deal with. And Blaze is probably the preferred uh, ability between his Zero Dog Gluttony, as stated before. It's a very, very viable option for stat distribution, of course, boost yourself. Now, when it comes to the move pool of Simusir, Heat Bore and Simusir has pretty much identical move pools with some variety, like for example, Simusir Bone could stockpile, I guess Walk Up instead, and I guess that's fair instead of Home Claw either. Uh, but overall, yeah, Simus here has Taunt, which is a very good option. We also have Solar Beam here already. We have Brick Break, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Rock Tomb, Torment, Flame Charge. Uh, we have Low Sweep, we have Overheat, Focus Blast here also. Acrobatics, which is a greater filler move, I would say, for the combination of the typing itself. Shadow Claw here also. We have Rock Slide. Grass Knot, which is something that has Overheat more, since Heat more has Giga Drain instead. That said, Grass Knot is you know, a 50 50 move, I say. Giga Drain is more consistent. Grass does definitely take out the heavier Pokemon as a whole. That said, we're going to tune move here. So we're going to see some similarities with the Low Kick. Uh, we're gonna see Gung Shot, Fire Punch, Super Power, Knock Off, Roll Play, Gastro Acid, and Throat Shot. But the one thing that does separate them here, I think is really important to mention, is a never. As said before, Focus Sash is something that is really good with Simus here due to his lower bulk, so Endeavor do kind of make it sort of a booth leg inferno to some extent with that set in mind. And it's still right with it, though it lacks self rocks clearly. That said, if we get a really cool boost in its egg move this generation, being of course in Ultra Sun and Moon specifically, Belch and Flare Blitz was something that Heatmore had as an advantage over Simus here before Ultra Sun and Moon. It did get that in this game, which I think is really cool. Uh, we also have Fire Spin here, we have Low Kick, as I said before, and we have one set of moves that sets it apart from Heatmore, and that is Nasty Plot. But overall, they're definitely very much the same with basically bulk versus speed here, and Simus here do have some filler moves I think makes it interesting, and of course with Ultra Sun and Moon and got the moves that Heatmore had over it, it does come down to a matchup of whether or not which stats, distribution, and overarching theme of Moopal is necessarily better. But one thing I think is very cool is to see that Heatmore and Simus here actually are very much alike. So much so that I think it's strange to talk about it, because quite frankly, Belch seems like some some other place, to be completely honest, for Simus here. But then you remember the gluttony and the reason why it could potentially grab it and use it well, which makes it all really, really interesting as a whole concept. However, one thing one must keep in mind is that Heatmore has Pursuit, it has Sucker Punch, and it has Fire Lash. I think these are moves that really makes Heatmore a really standout Pokemon because it has a low speed here, that's not going to necessarily go away. And Fire Lash is a good defensive pressure move. It's very cool to see that Heatmore does have that and definitely believe it's an interesting exclusive move. And of course, Pursuit. You're always going to be in variety here where you're going to win the match and force out of the switch. Being able to capitalize on Pursuit and deal with that, that's going to be great. And I actually appreciate that quite a lot. That said, it's very, very much so that one really has to look as the overarching theme and what Mega Fire type is really good. And since they're both are defined as more offensive wall breakers, if anything else, definitely not sweeper, though Simmons here can represent that. Um, it comes down to Fire Stab is actually very good offensively. And since they're both, as stated here, aren't necessarily that bulky, it comes down to whether which one can hit the most most of the time or are more consistent. And here is where it's very easy for me to say that one of these Pokemon are able to at least ensure to get hit more often than the other. While Sucker Punch is great, it doesn't resolve any speed here, and even Sea Snatch, while a viable option, without setup, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Simus here has a lot of options. We have Nasty Plot, we have Grass Knot, which is going to resolve most things. Having Grass Knot and Fire Step are a very, very strong combination, stronger than Giga Rain due to the most Pokemon that are able to wall Fire types actually are very heavy in general. And of course, since Boca Focus Blast is no longer even an issue there either, it is very, very clear to me, in my opinion, that Simus here, due to this Oracle theme and function in the meta, is better than Heatmore. But with that said, I really like both of these Pokemon. I think they're great. Uh, being able to actually review them, being a low tier fire type, and definitely celebrate them for a little while. It did make me quite happy. I definitely didn't think I would come so far with the actual review in Pokemon that I like that aren't necessarily interesting by other players unless you use them before. So that said, I hope I shed some light on how good this Pokemon really can be. 
and I really hope Simisir get a proper boost to be completely honest in the meta and ladder. Quite frankly, I don't believe it is as bad as people make it out to be and I think it has more to do with inexperience with the Pokemon itself than it actually has to do with Pokemon, the demon is viability involved with anything else because due to its combination and now C moves, it got a lot better and it got so much better that I think it's a viable option in even RU and possibly a league concept also because it's a Pokemon that has a high speed tier, has good offensive stats, it just doesn't peek at them but with setup moves and nasty plot and of course Pinchberry, it does stand out and it stands out quite a lot and I think Heatmore has still things to result to be of course more effective, that said it is far from a bad Pokemon but definitely as a stone of fire type, it is a steep competition, Simisir as I said here due to being of course a faster fire type has less things to keep in mind when it's used, Heatmore really needs to take a more defensive approach and when you're a fire type that aren't necessarily that bulky it becomes a massive issue even with the perks in mind. So yeah, with that said, I really hope you enjoyed this episode and do tell me what you guys think of these Pokemon as a whole. I do believe as I stated here, they are definitely forgotten Pokemon that aren't necessarily as bad as people make them out to be. And I'm being very, very happy to be talking about them. And I really want to talk about them again in something else in another variety. So with that said, we only have one more ape to cover. And that of course, as you guys already know, the water semi-poor. And you're going to love this matchup.